If ever there was a ship class that represented the industrial might, and some of the limitations, of the United States in World War II, it was the Casablanca class. At the start of 1941, there were only two prototype escort carriers, the Long Island class, then in service. Much thought was being given to the conversion of liners into mid-sized carriers instead of the smaller escort carriers, and whilst that would ultimately go nowhere, the first major class of escort carriers, the Bogues, were still months away from being laid down. And on the north side of the Columbia River, separating Vancouver, Washington, not Vancouver, Canada, and Portland, Oregon, there was not much at all just south of the old fort. That all changed in April 1941, when Henry J. Kaiser was asked to get another shipyard going to further construct Liberty ships. The site on the Columbia River was selected, and in less than a year the shoreline was converted into a multiple slipway shipyard capable of mass production. Happy with his mass production methods, which were sending Liberty ships to sea at an extremely rapid rate, Kaiser proposed to build 30 escort carriers using the same methods in early 1942, but the US Navy, by this point with just over 50 such ships on the books, refused. Kaiser used his connections to go over their heads straight to the President, and argued his case for purpose-built escort carriers, all previous designs at this point having been conversions. Roosevelt thought this was a good idea. Although Kaiser wanted to build a hundred vessels, Admiral Land suggested that maybe we should start out with an order for 50. This was agreed, and the order for 50 ships was placed to a design by Gibbs and Cox, who had spent much of the interwar period providing endless entertainment for future historians with increasingly wonderful battle carrier designs. This design, though, was a lot more practical. Displacing just under 8,200 tons standard, it meant that the Casablanca class weighed slightly less, but were fractionally longer, than a Bogue class, whilst the Sangamons were a little larger and a lot heavier. But unlike these vessels, of course, the Casablancas were keel-up designed as carriers. As a result, the hangar deck was larger than both predecessor classes, and the flight deck was somewhere in between the two, as far as length went. This allowed the ships to support just under 30 aircraft, give or take a few, depending on the types that were embarked, which was almost 50% more than a Bogue, and competitive with the much larger Sangamons. Power came from a pair of reciprocating steam engines using 9,000 shaft horsepower via two screws to move the ships through the water at between 19 and 20 knots, depending on the vessel. This rather 19th century engine choice was made because there was a limit on how many gear sets for steam turbines it was possible for US industry to produce at this point, and so other ships that needed higher speeds were prioritised for these engines and gear sets. Nonetheless, the Casablancas would still end up being a knot or two faster than their predecessors in the escort carrier division. As designed, the ships were supposed to carry a single 5-inch 38 dual-purpose gun, eight single 40mm Bofors, and twelve single 20mm Orlicans, although in practice the medium and light anti-aircraft armament was often upgraded to double or more that barrel count. The ships also had a better distribution of machinery, ensuring greater survival chances against underwater hits, and they were more agile than the converted escort carrier designs that preceded them. However, armour was almost non-existent. This was limited to splinter-proof plating around the island, the weapons emplacements, and the ammunition storage areas that were above the waterline. It wasn't possible on the design to include any anti-torpedo protection, although various programs to give a modicum of torpedo protection to escort carriers would be enacted once the ships were in service. Production began with USS Casablanca CVE-55 on the 3rd of November 1942, with the ship taking around nine months from keel to commission a pattern common for the first dozen or so ships, but even this remarkably quick turnaround time was dramatically improved as time went on. By the time the last keels were laid in early 1944, the time from keel to commission had dropped to about three and a half months. Although intended for convoy escort work, plans to transfer a number to the Royal Navy for this purpose were changed, and the second batch of Bow class was sent over instead, with the whole of the Casablanca class retained by the US Navy. The unexpectedly swift and early arrival of the Essex class, as well as the Independence class like carriers, meant that a major pushback against the Imperial Japanese Navy began in earnest 
a little bit earlier than had initially been expected. Thus, whilst some convoy escort work was assigned to them, and this included the capture of U-505 by the USS Guadalcanal, CVE-60, the Casablanca's bread and butter became supporting the numerous amphibious operations in the Pacific, where their low speed didn't matter too much. This freed up the larger and faster carriers to hunt down remaining Japanese vessels and to remain significantly more mobile on the front lines. Facing a somewhat more frontline role than originally anticipated, five vessels would be lost to enemy action. USS Liscombe Bay was lost in the Gilbert Islands campaign when the submarine I-175 hit it with a torpedo, detonating the bomb magazine and completely destroying the ship, taking almost three quarters of the crew with her. Gambier Bay and St. Lo were both lost a month later on the same day, Gambier Bay being sunk by gunfire from the Japanese centre force during the Battle of Samar, and the St. Lo being struck by an early kamikaze attack, although in both cases casualty figures were pretty much reversed, with over three quarters of the crew surviving. Armamani Bay and Bismarck Sea were sunk in early 1945, also by kamikazes, although again in both cases the majority of the crew survived, despite some rather spectacular explosions. Post-war, as with most escort carriers, their slow speed and limited capacity in the face of new jet aircraft and so many large carriers being present that even most of the Essex class was mothballed, saw the Casablancas rapidly decommissioned, except for a few used as aircraft transports or helicopter carriers. A few of the ships were scrapped almost immediately post-war, but most of the class sat in reserves until they were scrapped at the end of the 1950s, with the very last, USS Thetis Bay, going to the breakers at the end of 1964. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.